Hey everybody, it's Miss Hannah, and it's time for another Bedtime Stories with Miss Hannah. Do you know what it is to vote for something or someone? It's when, basically when you say what you would prefer, there's at least two choices. So if I said vote for your favorite ice cream, and I said vanilla or chocolate, what would you vote for? Well... We're going to be talking about voting for a president very soon because it's coming up on a four-year period, which is how often we select a new president. And I wanted to teach you guys a little something about voting, so I decided we'd read some vote books tonight. So are you ready to read with me? I'm looking forward to it. Here we go. My first one is If I Had Your Vote by the Cat in the Hat. Let's see this little book. It says, If I had your vote, oh, the things I could do. Oh, the things I could do with a yes vote from you. If I had your vote, if I were in charge, I would make a few changes, some small and some large. If I had your vote and a and a fun, fun, fun staff. And not just a staff, but a staff and a half. I would have my fun staff fill the fridge with fun foods like hot dogs and cakes that make fun feeling moods. Can you see all the yummies in the fridge? No, 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 no. I always have trouble with pages, don't I? If I had your vote, I would really prefer this office to be far more oval -er -er. Thing one and thing two would know just what to do to square up this room and re-oval it through. Because the president's office is called the Oval Office. And the cat in hat just thinks it's not oval enough. Now if I had your vote, I would smile and smile and sit very still for a very long while. The painters would paint me from morning till night to get every inch of my smiler just right. Can I see your smiler? Jeez. Awesome. If I had your vote, I would sign all these bills with ink and a pen made from sticky pine quills. These bills would become laws, and those laws, with some luck, would now and for always stay stickety stuck. If I had your vote, I could be on TV with all of these pointy things pointing at me. I would be in your house. You could all see my face. You could all see my face even way out in space. If I had your vote, I would take all these books and sort them by smell and hook them on hooks so that all you would need is your nose, beak, or snout to sniff out a title and check a book out. I wonder what this kind of book is about. If I had your vote, I would paint this whole place. These cases, these vases, these boots and their laces. And all these tall walls with their unfunny faces. But as for this room, I would leave it alone. That hat on his head looks a lot like my own. Do you know who that is? That's Abraham Lincoln. He was one of our presidents. Now, if I had your vote and these plates and old bowls for fun, I would put them on top of these poles and twirl them and swirl them around and around until they stop spinning and fall to the ground. But no need to panic or worry, you see. The new ones I pick will be perfect for me. If I had your vote, I would meet other leaders who happen, like me, to be quite messy eaters. Oh, how we would eat. We would eat, 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 eat with our skorks and our floons and our hands and our feet. They are some messy eaters, aren't they? 
if I had your vote, I would plant far more flowers and trim these high hedges for hours and hours, then shower the flowers with water I take from this splishy and splashy and fishy free lake. If I had your vote and some almost hatched eggs with shells up on top and the bottom half legs, those long-legged eggs would not be a batch of eggs you could catch before they'd all hatch. Now that's kind of funny. Look at those little eggs with the little tiny feet. They're running. If I had your vote, every night in the sky would look like it looks on the 4th of July. Kabooms of all colors, like pink, blue, and red, would spark up the dark in the sky overhead. And right at the end, I would send up a socket. A socket the size of a space shuttle rocket. The socket would soar and kaboom in the sky, and then socks of all sizes would fall out from up high. Everybody would have a sock. If I had your vote, I could hire a crew, a clean-it-all crew that would clean this house through. Thing one would wipe windows, thing two would scrub chairs, and little cat A would shampoozle the stairs. You see a little cat A? Ooh, look at him shampooing the stairs. Then, little cat B, all the way to cat Z, would sweep every speckle of dirt they could see. With one final touch-up from Little Cat Q, this not-so-new house would look newer than new. So there are the ones on the vacuum. And then we move over here to the last Little Cat cleaning. If I had your vote, that is what I would do. The country would love me, I think. How about you? The end of If I Had Your Vote by Cat in the Hat. I think that the Cat in the Hat made a very good case for voting for him. I mean, if he'd come in and clean my house, I'd be really happy. So now our next book is called I Voted. Making a Choice Makes a Difference. And this is by Mark Schulman and Serge Block. Ready? I voted. Making a choice makes a difference. It says, which do you like better, apples or oranges, markers or crayons, trampolines or swimming pools? Some choices are easy to make, like ice cream or onions. Blech. Some choices are harder, ice cream or cupcakes. Anytime you choose one thing instead of another, you can say that you voted for it. Or when you're the only one voting, do you want a kiss for bedtime? Ding, 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 yes. You tend to get what you want. But people usually vote together. Imagine you're choosing a classroom pet. Everyone will be voting. Turtle, rabbit, turtle, rabbit, which one won? We have three votes for rabbit, two votes for turtle. I think rabbit won. And the pet you'll all get is the pet that the most people vote for. And it, it, even if it isn't the one you wanted, so if you want your choice to win, here's what you can do before everyone votes. You can let people know which choice you want. You can work with the people who want the same thing. You can talk to the people who want something different. Maybe you will change their mind. Maybe they will change yours. You never know. Then when it's time to vote, you vote. It's simple. Sometimes everyone knows what you chose. Yes, no, yes, yes. Sometimes it's a secret. But everyone's vote must get counted, and the winner is whatever got the most votes. And the winner is maybe your side will win. Hooray! And maybe your side will not. Hmm. 
But if you don't vote, you don't get to choose. And your vote might be the one that makes the difference. Win or lose, when everyone follows the rules, voting is fair to everyone. It's the same when grown-ups vote. Grown-ups vote for the people who help run our towns, our cities, states, and our country. They could be mayors, governors, representatives, senators, or even the president of the United States. I bet I'm reading to a future president of the United States. That would be cool. Now, these people pass laws that change the way we live, so we have to choose our leaders carefully because different leaders want different things. Some will do things you really, really like, free for kids, but some will do things you really, really don't. No kids allowed. Grr. Grumpy, grumpy bug. That's why it's important to choose the leaders we want, so we vote. We vote for candidates. A candidate is someone asking for your vote. Please, I am the best and I am modest. How do you know which candidate will make the best choices? Me! No, me! You listen. You read. You talk to people you trust. Well, what do you think? Ice cream is good. Sometimes you can even ask the candidates yourself. What's your position on ice cream? Yes, it's a very hot topic. <laughs> when election day finally comes, everyone goes to the nearest voting place. Their voting place is a school. Your parents might be a church. You never know where it is. It's always good to know, though. Once you've had your 18th birthday and your name is added to the list of voters, you can vote, too. And every voting place, everyone stands in line. Everyone finds their name on the voter list. Everyone votes for a candidate, and someone wins. If you're old enough, it's important to vote. I'm old enough. Not me. If you're not old enough, you know what to do. You listen, read, talk, and ask. And tell someone who's old enough to bring you along on election day. When the voting is done, you might get a sticker. And that sticker will say, I voted. And that's the end of I voted. Making a choice makes a difference. And that's by Mark Schulman and Serge Block. Now, my next book, I hope we don't run out of time. This is my next book. Vote for Our Future, and this is by Margaret McNamara, McNamara, there we go, <laughs> and Micah Player. So let's read this book. Now, every two years, on the Tuesday after the first Monday of November, Stanton Elementary School closes for the day. For repairs? Nope. For a holiday? Nuh uh. For vacation? No way! Stanton Elementary School closes for Election Day! And changes from a school to a polling station. Well, what's a polling station? A polling station is where people vote. Look how cool that looks. The reason that people Vote is to choose who makes the laws of the country. We should all vote, said LaToya. We should all vote to make the future better. We can't vote until we turn 18, said Lizzie. So what can we do? The kids of Stanton Elementary School did their research. They looked in books and made notes. They went online and found all kinds of information. They even took a trip to their local election office and picked up forms. I can't wait till I can vote for real, said them all. Me either, said everybody else. Kids have to live with adult choices. The kids of Stanton Elementary School were ready to spread the word. And they're right. Kids do have to live with adult choices. Now, here, Katie and her mom made flyers and handed them out. Don't forget to vote, Katie told one busy dad. I didn't even know there was an election, he said. 
Now you do, said Katie. Can I go with you when you vote? Jasmine asked her big sister. It's a pain to vote, her sister said. I'm not even registered, added her friend. It's not hard to register, said Jasmine. You can do it together, and I can show you how. Nadia and her auntie went door to door. Voting is a right, Nadia said, a right that women didn't have a hundred years ago. One lady told them, I don't like standing in lines. I don't like lines either, answered Nadia's auntie. But if we stand in line for coffee or for a movie or at a bank, I bet we can stand in line to vote, said Nadia. Hmm, said the lady, maybe we can. At Jaden's house, the whole family was making their voting plans. Jaden's dad was voting before work. Jaden's mom was voting after work. I've talked to that polling station every election since I, I've walked, excuse me, I've walked to that polling station every election since I could vote, Jaden's great grand told him. But I can't walk so far anymore. A volunteer can drive you, said Jaden. Let's get you set up, said Jaden's mom. Mia and Noah and Jamal had a bake sale. Don't forget to vote, Mia said as she handed out change. I'll be away on election day, said one woman. In our state, you can vote early, said Mia. Or you can vote by mail, said Jamal. The voter guide tells you how. Voting? What's the big deal? asked a teenager. People fought war so we can vote, said Mia. That's a big deal. Why should I vote, said a sad lady. Nothing ever changes. Besides, one vote won't make a difference. Are you kidding, said Jamal. Changes are made every day because people voted. It says every vote counts. By the time it was the first Tuesday after the first Monday of November, every kid at Stanton Elementary School had spread the word to their families, to their neighbors. Can you see? To their families, to their neighbors, to friends and to strangers, to friends of strangers. The whole town had a voting plan. And on election day, and on election day, oh, I'll show you this. This I have to show you very far back. Can you see all of that? I'll have to show it to you panel by panel. On election day, voters came early in the morning before the sun was up, and they waited in line with coffee. They rolled in on wheelchairs. They voted for the first time and for the 50th time. They ran in at the last minute, and they came with their sons and daughters their nieces and nephews, their brothers and sisters, their cousins and friends. On our next page. On the first Wednesday after the first Monday of November, all the votes had been counted. The results were so close, the votes had to be counted again. Some people won, and some people lost. The laws of the country began to change. Stanton Elementary School went back to being a school. And the future began to change. And that is the end of Vote for Our Future. And this is a really good book. I've got it live on the bookmobile. So, now that it's time for us to get ready and to go to bed, let's all go have our bath and brush our teeth and get all ready, snuggle in tight, and have a good night. And I look forward to seeing you soon where we can read some more books together. Okay? Good night. Bye.